Hi, Roy Grace from the Pope and Young Club. I'm the records chairman. Uh, we're here uh, live at panel um, to judge and authenticate all these uh, tremendous trophies. Um, basically, we're letting you in here to show you really what happens at panel. Um, and a lot of people don't understand what is panel. Well, we have a recording period of two years. It begins on the odd number of years, ends on the even years. So December 31st of 2020 was the end of our 32nd recording period. At the end of that, the top animals of every species category um, during that two year recording period come here to be verified of the original measurements. And that's what all these panel judges are doing. And so at the end of that, they get authenticated by us um, to ensure that that score is the relevant and real score. And then they are entered and they are eligible for awards, those animals and the hunter are eligible for awards at our convention in July. This occurs every two years and has for many years. Um, and it's a, an interesting process that you'll see coming up and just how um, accurate, how serious these measures are about ensuring that it's done correctly. When an animal comes to panel and we need it to be measured, there's actually two three person teams that will measure that animal. So the first team of three measure the animal They'll turn in their score sheet to me, we'll check it, and then it gets measured again by a second three-person team. If they're very, very, very close or right on, not an issue, and we compare it to the original score sheet. In a perfect world, and it actually happens quite often, it is very similar to the original score sheet, and we accept that. When there are little minor discrepancies or, or judgment calls on some of these very, very unique and complex antler structures, what we'll do is we bring the two teams together and we resolve those issues or those points that are in question. We do not leave here until that is resolved. Ultimately, it's my decision on what we're going to do based on policy, our, our manual policy on how to measure, and for consistency, prior panels of how we treated sets incidents in the past. Um, many people think, you know, oh, it just goes to panel and it goes down. I've been on, on several panels, and while a few may go down, um, just last panel in Omaha, Nebraska, the, the current world record non-typical whitetail went up a number of inches at panel from the original measurement. So I've seen them go down, I've seen them go up, but the majority of them stay as the original measurement. So that myth um, is just that, a myth. Uh, they need to be verified and it needs to be done correctly. This time in Reno in, in 2021 at this judges panel, uh, kind of unique and the first of its kind. For the first time ever in Pope and Young history, we have velvet entries here. We're not just using them for our display at the convention as an honorable mention. This is the first time we are actually measuring velvet animals for awards at the convention. Um, that's new. Additionally, we have 30 measures and we added a few more measures because of the new addition of velvet um, prior to when COVID hit and kind of knocked some of that down. But of those measures, um, we have six of them here that have over 40 years of measuring experience. And combined years of experience here in this group is over 800 years of experience. I have Larry Strife that's here that, that you'll probably speak to later, that's done more panels than anybody else. Uh, people like Glenn Heisey, Roger Atwood, uh, Ken Witt, Gil Hernandez, longtime measurers that are very, very good at what they do. Uh, and, and specialties within their own group. Um, that's reassuring, I, I believe, to a hunter to know that it's gonna get done correctly. And we also have, for the first time, some much newer measures um, that are measuring quite a few animals in Alaska, etc. cetera. Um, kind of that, and I, I don't wanna age myself, but kind of that younger generation that are very enthusiastic, they're, they're pretty good measures and they're here to their first panel. Um, we're, we're trying to mix them in with us because they need to be the next group that's gonna take our spot in the future. Um, they appear to have, be having a re really good time and learning a lot. And so for the first time, that's kind of unique for us. Also, lastly, 
for the first time ever in our Poking Young history, there are four former records chairmen that are measuring today. That'd be Ed Fanchon, Roger Atwood, Larry Stripe, and Glenn Heisey. That's never occurred either. So that just tells you the amount of experience that we have here. So at the conclusion of both teams, and it, and it comes to us and me to authenticate, or the director of records, Eli Randall, those scores are kept with us until convention time. So the hunter's not gonna know what it ended up here. Um, they'll find out at convention time and when they get their award. Um, we haven't released those in the past because it's kind of exciting for the hunter, I think, uh, especially when that, when that score goes up. Um, so what we do is, is we authenticate it, we double check everything, all the math, all that has to be completed before we can do that. And it's oftentimes not done right here more of an office administration type um, uh, duty. So that's the end of that process for a panel. And then once we have that list of where they rank within the top three, we give out awards to the third place and some honorable mentions at the convention in July and right now. Hello, uh, I'm Alan, this is Jim and Gabe. We're here at the panel uh, in Reno this year. and. Uh, our job is to unload the crates, take the animals out, prepare them for these guys to measure them, Ten and four. then we will load them back in their crates that they come in, send them back to the rifle owner. Eight and two. Okay, and the system we, we have derived over the years is we, we pop the box open for the first time and see what these other guys have got in store for us. We have to replicate that at the end to get them back like they sent them to us. So we would mark mark any framing or any bracing that we come across so that it's easiest when we get ready to put it back together. We go right to that mark. We have no trouble, it runs pretty smooth. And we gotta tag um, and mark every single box before we actually even open We have a color-coded system oh, wow. where we, yeah. depending on what it's doing and the route it's traveling, we put a different color code on there so, and we stable to the front of the box so that at a glance when we walk by, we know what, what's going on with that box. We don't have to guess or look in it or hunt and peck on a piece of paper. It looks pretty good, pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. First process in, in uh, scoring this unusual uh, typical deer was to determine the typical frame of it. And we determined this, of course, to be the right beam. And after talking it over, this projection here is the, is the closest matching to be the left beam. All the rest of this in here is considered non-typical. Um, some of it is a little hard to determine the base of, from where it comes. Um, we're looking at roughly uh, 64 points, I believe it was. So uh, um, we've got a lengthy uh, measuring time here, uh, probably about five and a half hours to get it completed for the first time. And then a second group will come in and try to uh, do it and then we'll get together with them and uh, confirm our measurements. So hopefully we can get this thing tied up today. Um, it's the most unusual animal I've ever seen. And uh, uh, we'll hopefully have a number for you, uh, you know, by the end of the day. You know, which, this cluster of three, which one's the parent point? Everything else is a point off of one of these three points, right? Mm -hmm. This is 54, I'll just mark them right away. One thing about these heads, when they shed the velvet, the surface becomes kind of waxy and it's very difficult for the tape to adhere. So the problem we're running into here is we have to wrap the complete point or the complete base to get the tape to stay in place. And that's taken a lot of time and it's really a problem as, as far as, uh, you know, making it look nice, but it, it's effective as far as keeping everything in place for the next team. Hi, I'm here with, I'm Rick Kruger. I'm with the Pope and Young Club and we've come in to verify this uh, score for this deer. Um, we are the second team coming in. Um, first team came in and did basically a lot of the work. They number all the points. So we all 
can verify the score. Um, there's a lot of points on this. So uh, myself, Mark Kroniak from New Jersey and Larry Strife from Minnesota are the second team. Um, as you can see, the one side's pretty simple. The other side's got a lot of work to it. Um, we hope to get it done in four to five hours. Um, I think that's, there, you know, there's some pretty complex structure in here, so we'll have to use all our uh, measuring skills to get to the bottom of it. So um, I think we'll have a lot of fun. Uh, animal we're measuring at this point is a is a velvet. It happens to be the very first velvet antlered animal that we are measuring as a panel because the board of directors has uh, okayed the fact that we're going to accept velvet animals in the book, and we've been blessed with the opportunity to measure this thing. Um, and it will be the first one that, that's been measured for, for the record book. Velvet it is different than measuring hard-horned animals because the fact that we can't put tape on the animal or on the on the horns, um, there's webbing between the points that it, that is strictly velvet, and we have to measure only what's what we can go down to. These um, require several measurers to to be present to help assist with this measuring thing. And we often draw our lines rather than doing it on on masking tape, we do it with a cable and someone holds that in position and then another measurer is able to uh, stick a pin in to give us a starting point and we measure on around on each of the each of the variety of antlers. Ed Fanchon here, we're uh, at the Pope and Young panel in Reno, Nevada. And what we're doing right now is we're verifying scores of all these top end animals that have been sent in. Uh, currently, my team is measuring a potential world record Thule elk. Uh, can't go over the score, but it's a whopper. And uh, so we're a team of three, we're gonna measure it once. Uh, and then another team of three is gonna measure it the second time. And then we're gonna compare those scores to the original score, which was officially scored by an official measure more than 60 days ago. And uh, we're gonna come up with an authentication of the final score. Uh, and that's the whole purpose for this process is just authenticating what the original score was when the animal was entered. When we panel measure an animal, we have two uh, three-man teams panel each individual animal. And with me here is Larry Streep and uh, Frank Noska. And we have to agree on where the baseline is to measure a point. We have to agree on how we, we run the cable around the main beam. And, and basically, we all three look at it and we all three agree on whatever measurement we're taking. And, and we're the second panel to do this elk potential uh, world record to the elk. Uh, so when we get done with this, then uh, they'll compare our measurements to the first panel. And then if there's a little bit of difference, then we'll get together and we'll, we'll rectify those differences. Uh, and that's how we come up with the, whether or not it's a world record. I'm Roger Atwood from Rexburg, Idaho. I began measuring for the club in 1978 um, and was very fortunate to end up on my first panel in 1979 because of Ray Torrey being a, <laughs> a friend and knew that I needed to learn. The greatest part of this panel experience is the learning experience and the, and the, the techniques that you gain from fellow panel managers. It's such an important and fun experience for everybody. 
we have the opportunity here to see not only the largest of animals taken, but the most unique problems that occur in our measuring system. And it gives us a great opportunity to learn from other measures who have either experienced it or, or have been taught exceptional ways to do these kinds of things. Um, new measuring techniques that, that different individuals have found that speed up the process, how to measure a, the base of an antelope. Or, um, I've introduced to several guys using a shorter piece of cable on smaller animals and you're not wrapped around a six foot piece of cable. There are just lots of things that you learn here in this panel experience that are so valuable and, it, and it's, it's a wonderful experience. Everybody, I've been very fortunate because I am, I am experienced. I've attended, since 1979, I've attended all panels except three, and those were medical and death related. I uh, was unable to attend, but I'm, I'm approaching 20, 21 panel measurings, which is a wonderful opportunity and honor to be given that calling. And I, don't, I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate it and how valuable it's been to my measuring experience. Hi, I'm Dallas Leo. Uh, this is my very first panel measuring uh, experience. I've been a member since 2001. Um, I've been a measurer for only five years, since 2016. Uh, coming to my very first panel was a little bit intimidating. Walking into a room uh, with guys that I've looked up to and idolized, you know, since a young kid. Guys like Roger have been nothing but welcoming, uh, showing me new techniques, uh, new tools, and just ways of, of measuring animals that, uh, that, that go on beyond what they, you know, they show in the, in the measuring manual. It's been nothing but uh, just a book of knowledge since I've been here. Um, and my first panel in only five years of measuring, I, I feel proud of that. And I look forward to uh, hopefully being on many more like Roger and, and continuing to learn from these guys and just building camaraderie and friendships. It is nothing like I expected. Um, I got here looking at all these animals. I thought, wow, this is, this is gonna be overwhelming. Um, it's actually just been nothing but fun. Um, no stress, these guys are, these guys are more than welcome to, to teach me things and, and I hope I've taught some of them uh, some tools and things as well. This is actually our first year that we've entered, that we've accepted velvet entries. And so there's a significant number of velvet trophies here and it's been a grand opportunity for each of us involved to get experience with the velvet animals because normally in our routine measuring we use hard, we measure hard horned animals and this has been a real learning experience even for some of these us older uh, more experienced measurers it's just been a real a real learning process and, and uh, we've had fun with it quite frankly panel measuring has is a fun fun opportunity um, and these guys enjoy it and, and it's something to look forward to all right i'm justin spring the director of records we're down here at pope and young's judges panel uh, we are here at the invitation of pope and young we have been working um, jointly since pny was founded in 1961 but more so in the last oh probably eight or ten years um, we have a memorandum of understanding. Pope and Young uses BNC scoring system. There's some differences in the scoring, but we always ensure that a couple of their uh, committee members and, and panel members are on our judges panels and vice versa. So we're just down here helping them out and we actually will recognize any of this panel score. If it's something that Boone and Crockett we need to panel, we honor the score down here. So that's why we're, we're, we're all here trying to get this knocked out.